Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here. Well, actually, I'm down here. There we go. And welcome to Space Engineers Mod Spotlight. I don't know what episode I'm on. I've been doing this for quite a long time, but this is the first one. The first one that I am, well, on a planet. I'm on a planet's surface. It's fantastic. I mean, we take a look around here. Oh no, my plane rolled off the runway. <laughs> Today we're gonna be spotlighting a mod that adds wings. Oops. Let me turn on my jetpack. Wings to space engineers. Wings that actually work. They do create, or they they create something that represents lift. Now, if you want to know exactly how these work by the numbers, you can go ahead and check out the, uh, the mod authors page here over on Steam. It'll explain everything, but basically, they simulate lift with forward momentum. The faster that you're going forward, the more lift you will produce. So if you slow down too much, you will stall, and you'll fall out of the sky. Now, I built a couple of aircraft and I've been experimenting with well, how these work and the kind of aircraft that I wanna make. And this right here, this one is one of my favorites. This is the one that I kinda of took all my knowledge and I kinda of dumped it into this one. This is the Jeep. Now this is actually the design characteristics of this one. Um, what I was going for is based on a real aircraft. It's a, uh, it's like a, a kit build from a long time ago that I, I really wanted. You can land these things just about anywhere because they've got these big wheels on them and they're able to land in fields and all kinds of places as long as it's relatively flat. Now, this one is fairly easy to fly. Now, she's got a lot of thrusters. You're probably thinking, Shaq, she's got a lot of thrusters. If the wings work, why do you need all these thrusters? Well, those two are braking thrusters just to be able to land on really short runways. And then these two side ones kind of work as a rudder for me. They give me a little bit more of that, uh, that horizontal control. And then, of course, I've got my big ass uh, aviation engine in the back there. I got my, uh, my, my, my uh, compression engine back there, so my jet engine. Now, we're gonna be flying this one, and then we're gonna fly the cargo ship, and we might try that one. I also wanna try a night landing. So we're at Shack Airport, so let's go ahead and jump in here. And we're gonna take this baby for a spin. Now, what makes the wing mod so great is that it adds a challenge to flying because you actually have to land these things. You gotta come down softly. You don't have the ability to float when you make an aircraft like this. What's also cool is an aircraft can be a lot cheaper to build than a spacecraft or a hovercraft or a big truck if you're just trying to make, say, a scout. Honestly, I don't need the weapons on this thing. I don't need the side thrusters. I don't need the braking thrusters. I could be okay with just kind of like the frame of this thing and cut it down to probably about maybe 30% of what she is right now and still be able to fly her. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and uh, get started. So we're gonna request permission to launch. Uh, Shack Tower, this is Shack One, requesting uh, a southbound departure on holding short runway one. They're gonna clear us. We're gonna make sure, did I already check? Handbrake is offline. We're gonna take um, control thrusters, control wheels off, control thrusters on. And we have our clearance. We're gonna run the engines up. And here we go. Now, turning on my UI, I've got 40 meters a second, 50, and she only needs about 45, 50 meters a second to take off in this aircraft. But since they've changed how weight and mass work with acceleration, uh, the bigger the aircraft is, the longer a runway run it's going to need, and the more lift it's going to need to actually pick it off the ground. So it works the way it's supposed to work. We can actually look out our window here, and we'll be able to see the airfield over there. Let me turn on my my inertial dampeners just to keep us a little bit a little bit straighter. But so the way the wings work is, you have to have forward momentum, forward based on the wings' direction, for them to create and simulate lift. Meaning that if I were to say flip straight up and use all those gyroscopes to allow me to do that, I will kill all my lift, and I will soon find myself falling to my doom. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna flip it around, so now that forward momentum is literally forward, and we're gonna kick on the engine, and we got a lot of forward momentum, but it's not gonna be enough, is it? Oh, baby! Oh, there she goes, and now we've got that lift again. And I have no thrusters pointing down to give us that kind of lift. So, let's go ahead and fling her back, buzz the tower, and then bring her in for a landing, and we'll take out the cargo aircraft next. There we go, highway to the danger zone. Oh man, I love it. I've been testing out lots of different landing configurations and different um, wing setups and how much weight they can pick up. Just trying to get, figure out what they're able to do because I think this is something I want to add into say a survival series. It may or not be being in the works for a possible Saturday release this Saturday. So keep an eye out on my channel, Morph's channel and Wasted Space channel for that. Uh, all right, so oh, I was gonna bring her for landing. That just buzzed the tower again. That's all right, we'll, we'll bring it around here and then we'll, we'll go ahead and land it. Actually, she can land just about anywhere. I could land her on the grass, but no, it's funner to try to land it on the, uh, on the actual runway. I can show you guys, when you try this yourself, 
Um, if you have no experience in, in actually like maybe landing an aircraft, uh, I will run you through some of the basics. So first thing you want to do is fly off the side of the runway when you're lining up, when you're doing your approach. And go ahead and start lowering that speed and that altitude. And then when you go in for the actual landing, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use your throttle to control your elevation. That's your plan. You want throttle to control elevation. So let's go ahead. We're going to turn on our UI so we can see what's going on. The only problem is the beacon thing takes up a lot of like being able to see the runway. We overshot a little bit. That's okay. That's why we got our, our rudder thrusters there. Make it a little easier on us. And we're going to just, I'm tapping the throttle right now to keep it so it's controlling my elevation. The more power I give it, the more elevation I get. So we're just going to keep doing this. Bring it in. There we go. Give it more throttle, more throttle. So we can kind of glide it, glide it. And then nice and easy. And we're down. And then hit P for break. And there's our brakes. Sweet. Not a bad landing. Now, don't freak out when you're, when you're bringing her in, especially heavier aircraft. If you see that big puff of smoke and it looks like there's uh, little bits of debris everywhere, that is a impact animation that Space Engineers has. And if you hit a certain threshold, you will see that. But you'll notice if you landed s softly enough, um, you will have done no damage to your aircraft. And you'll still make that horrific, like, banging noise, even though... And sometimes you won't if you do it really softly. That's when you know you made, like, the perfect landing. When you do... We don't see any type of uh, impact animation, and you don't hear the sound effect. But uh, don't freak out if you do see it. It is a thing, especially with heavier aircraft. So what we're going to do is... Uh, we're going to leave the jet there for now. That's one of the, um, the harder ones to land because it uses the small wheels. Keep this in mind when building your aircraft. The small wheels, the, the impact, they don't seem to be able to take a lot in the way of impact. So they break off very easily. So don't be surprised if you even get like a nice landing and they snap right off. Uh, it just seems to be a thing. Sometimes they're, they're good, sometimes not so much. That's one of the reasons why I actually, I used to have the smaller wheels on this boy, which was kind of modeled after a C-130, uh, kind of hastily put together because I really wanted to test the mechanics over the looks. Now that I've got them down, I think I could really mod something awesome into the game. Um, you know, put a bunch of mods in and build something awesome, I mean. But I swapped out the small wheels for the larger ones because they can handle a much greater impact uh, and be okay. And this thing should be able to land just about anywhere. So I wanted to do that. Uh, running it through the ship systems, she's got three engines on each side. Uh, well, she's actually missing an engine on this side, and I think I know why. When I was testing her earlier, I had a really good landing, but I did get a little too close to, um, well, that hill over there on the left, as you can see. So we'll fix that. She did roll back a little bit. I don't think I left parking, the parking brake on. She's got braking thrusters, and she's got, again, the same setup, a few maneuvering thrusters. But you don't actually need those. They're just kind of nice for that extra bit of control. Uh, let's see. We can run into the back, and we can actually get in that way. So let's do that. You're going to notice there's a lot of impact craters around the base. Some tests went better than others. That's all I'm going to say. There may even be a couple aircraft corpses out there. So let's jump in and run it. There we go. We're back up. So, we're going to check I make sure the parking brake is off. It's not. We're going to leave control wheels on on this one because, yes, she has a lot of thrust, but uh, she's also got a lot more weight on board. Uh, I've tested this with cargo containers as well, so um, she needs a bit more runway, runway room. She doesn't need... Actually, she does need just about all of this. This aircraft works really well if you drop it at the end of the runway. Uh, I don't know, maybe it has something to do with the friction of the wheels and the extra weight, but she doesn't want to let go of the runway. So at the very end, she'll kind of like drop off. She should. We'll get a little bit of a dip, and then boom, we're gone. So let's go ahead, get our clearance. Shack Tower, this is Shack 1 requesting a northbound departure from runway 3, holding short. That'll be like you're clear for takeoff. We're going to go ahead and gun those engines, all six of them, lots of thrust. We're up to 200, 300. See, right right now I should be able to take off, but I can't. Now we gotta give it give it some angle. Oh, there we go. Oh, the new sound effects are great. You can actually hear those turbines off the wing actually running, and that's one of my favorite things. Now this one, because of her weight, actually flies a lot more like an aircraft you'd expect, right? She doesn't she doesn't toss around or get thrown around like maybe the the Jeep does. There's our airfield there. You can hear the engines kicking off. Now, if you're wondering, what are those pistons for, Shaq? That's actually so I can hit a button and lift the aircraft off the runway uh, so I can replace, replace wheels. So if I was in survival, how would you lift this so you could, um, well, do some work underneath it? Maybe you, you popped a tire on one of your landings while re resupplying your outer base or one of your buddies. Well, 
you'd have to find a way to lift it. And I think attaching a piston to your vehicle is the best way to do it. Easiest way to do it. And she, she's a little sluggish, but she flies. The dev said that some, the, the dev for the mod has said that uh, you can use these wings as flaps. It is possible with rotors, but you guys know how rotors work in space engineers. It's, it's questionable at best. And we're doing a max speed of about 376 kilometers an hour. And uh, we're about 4,000 out, so we're going to bring her back. Now, keep in, look, at, look at the terrain real quick. We're going to do a night landing after this. Um, I have to remember that about 4,000 meters away from the airfield, because you're not going to be able to see anything at night uh, when the sun is completely on the other side of the planet. We're not going to be able to see a damn thing. So I have to remember how the terrain looks, because we're not going to be able to see it when I come in for a landing. All right. So let's go ahead and watch our altitude. This is, I really like that they gave us an altimeter. We got uh, 550 meters left to burn. So we're gonna bring it down. We're gonna come back to runway three. Requesting permission to land. We'd probably say we're on the, uh, I don't know, the whatever mountains we would call those. We're coming from those mountains. They'd say you're clear for runway three. And we would line up. Now, I like landing in first person, but we'll switch it to third, and I'll give it my best go. Uh, yeah, I think it's a, probably a little bit easier, actually. Around th we're using that throttle to um, control our elevation, and nice and easy. We want all four wheels on the ground. There we go. And kick on those brakes. See what I'm talking about with the debris that you see flying everywhere? But if we look, oh, uh, we popped a wheel. So that happens more often than not. Like, that happens quite often if you lose a wheel. Um, I'm not sure. I, I might have to put some, in a final version, I might want to put some downward thrusters just to give me, I don't know, maybe a softer landing, or I just got to get better. I, I did hit it a little hard, probably because I did it in third person. In first, it's easier to judge, judge speed and also your um, how level you are with the ground, especially if you've done it a few times. You can kind of look at your horizon and say, okay, I know I'm like 20 degrees down or 10 degrees down. But, um, yeah, this mod is one of my favorites now. It really is. It's a, it's a must-have for planets for me um, because I get to build cool stuff like this, which just really wouldn't work as... It wouldn't be as fun without the working wings. It really wouldn't. So, all right, let's go ahead and switch out to a nighttime landing and give that a go for a whole new challenge. Okay, here we go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Captain Check here. Welcome back. Uh, I have set up the runway for a night takeoff and landing scenario. Uh, we've got the, the tower over there. I could put some more lights on this, make it feel a little bit more alive, but I really want to just show you guys how the lighting works, the way it's set up, so you can actually see the runway. It's actually really cool how the work they've done on the lighting system. But anyways, we are aboard my cargo aircraft. Let me jump out so you can see. Here's cargo aircraft. She's got... Oh, no, she's still missing that damn engine. Let's throw that engine back on. She'd actually fly without the engine. It only needs all six engines when she's carrying cargo that I've noticed so far. We'll jump back on board and we're gonna start taking off. Now here's the mission plan. We're gonna take off. We're gonna make sure we don't hit that mountainside ahead of us. We're going to pull a nice light left turn just like we did before. We're gonna keep gaining altitude. We're gonna make sure we cross over the mountainside to our left, which is about 500 meters high. So we're gonna wanna make sure we're about eight, 900 meters. We're gonna come back the way we came and we're gonna land right back on this field, hopefully without crashing into the mountainside behind us. We're gonna call behind us south and for us north. So we're gonna request our permission to take off. So, uh, check Air Force Base, check one, requesting permission for takeoff. Uh, I'm going for a, what is this, a northbound departure. And we'll get our okay. You can see the X on runaway one is, means it's shut down. Here, oh, let's make sure our handbrake is off. Good. And we're going to control wheels for the extra thrust. And let's, wait, do we seem like crooked to anybody else? Are we missing a wheel? We're missing a back wheel. Oh, shit. All right, let's try it with one wheel. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Oh, she's leveled off. I'm using a little bit of that side thrust. Speed is good. That wheel's giving us trouble, though. And we're off. Now, we gotta go up, because that mountainside is right there. Uh, there we go. And we're off the ground. We're looking good. Fantastic. Not too shabby. Now, we gotta get a lot of altitudes. We're gonna keep gunning it. We need about 500 meters, and we're gonna start that light turn to the left. All right. So, I had an auto save, and it kind of, like, really messed me up. But we're giving it another shot. I don't know why I have autosave on this. We're going to give it another go, though. Uh, the Air Force Base is right off our left-hand side. You can see it there below. Uh, we're going to come in a lot slower this time and hopefully get a nice soft landing. So we're only about 300 meters off the ground. And we have to be really, really careful. I'm going to have to speed up some more just to get some more altitude. 
Um, we have to be really careful because there's a hill at the opening of the Air Force Base at our base that we don't want to run into. Because if we do, we're going to die. It's about 100 meters tall above the base itself. And if we come in too low, we're going to clip it with the wheels and nosedive into the airfield, which I have actually done uh, the first time I tried this. I was like, perfect, perfect lineup. And I couldn't see it because it's pitch black out. And now let's go ahead and bring her down. We're looking good. Looking pretty good. And we're going to want to level out soon. We're going to flare it to slow down. And we're down. Oh, it's beautiful. We're still missing that one wheel in the back, though. So let's go ahead and put on our brakes. Nice. The flare at the end, and it really works well with this, because remember how I said the forward momentum, right? Uh, flare it at the end will bring your wheels up a little bit. And what you're supposed to have is a lot of um, air friction to stop the aircraft. But in this, you change that forward momentum for the lift to, well, like 45 degrees. So it kind of slows you down a little bit more. Also, the way the thrusters work in this, you get that extra big boost of thrust that will uh, will kill your speed a bit. And, uh, and I give you that nice, like, feathered landing. So even though we were missing a wheel, we still managed to put her down. This would have been an emergency landing. And flight crew should be out here right now rushing to see if we need help. Uh, it looks like we have no damage. No damage at all. We used a lot of the runway, though, and I think we can, make, we can do better. We can definitely do better. But anyways, I hope you guys check out the aerodynamic wing mod. It is really, really cool. It's like aviation mod that opens up so many possibilities for gameplay. There is a little bit of a, um, if you're playing multiplayer with this, I haven't tried it yet, but uh, an exploit. Because these don't have like thrust, they can be hidden inside vehicles to be used as extra thrust or extra lift in places that you shouldn't have it. So make sure like the people on your server, if you're playing with friends, let's so they know that, you know, Build reasonably, and that's what I'm gonna do on, on the servers when I play. It's like, it has to make sense for it to actually work. If the wing is built inside the cargo bay, it should not be creating lift, so you shouldn't have it in there. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more gaming goodness, and I hope you guys build some aircraft. I would love to see them, so feel free to send me a link to your Steam Workshop page. That would be cool. All right, guys, see you in the next Spotlight. Later.